Well, look what we have here. Back again for more, are you? Didn't I say there was nothing else to learn? <sighs> oh, fine. Proving me wrong, eh? So, you really want to understand Among Us, do you? Well, buckle up. I've scoured the bottom of my brain to deliver to you these tips that I definitely did not miss from my previous tutorials. Before we begin, there are new settings to discuss. Currently, you can turn confirmation on ejection off and visual tasks can be turned off as well. In beta, there's new options to anonymize voting and only show the taskbar at meetings or not at all. Apparently, the devs decided it was too easy for the crewmates. First and foremost, please do stay alert. Whether you are a good crewmate trying to deduce who the enemy are, or an imposter searching for an alibi, it will be so much harder if you don't pay attention to who is around you and where they are. On we go. Tasks. To be a good crewmate, efficiency is key. Once a task shows the task completed line, you can speed up your exit by manually clicking on the X in the top corner, saving yourself precious seconds. For trash, if you let the debris hit the bottom of the pipe, it loses all momentum and takes longer to clear once you pull the lever. If you're quick to the lever, however, the task is over in a much shorter time span. For the navigation task on the Skeld, just click or tap in the center to automatically align. You do not need to drag the target over. Also on the Skeld, when completing the top align engine's task, if you align it correctly and then double click on the arrow, both parts of the task will complete instantly. On Polus, the two temperature tasks show a current temperature and a reading to match. Both values are generated from sets listed here. The potential difference between these values ranges from 10 to 50 for the lava task and 10 to 60 for the freezing task. Each time you open the task, new values are taken from the sets. So, when starting the task, quickly identify if your difference is on the larger end of the scale. If it is, it's almost guaranteed to be quicker to quit the task and open it again to get a new range. Also, within the laboratory on Polus, if you are having trouble finding your stellar object in the telescope task, quit and restart the task for a new object. Or conversely, just memorize where the objects are on the stellar map, which does not ever change. When performing the Simon Says Reactor task, if you miss what your next sequence is, don't guess. Guessing will leave you right back at the beginning. Instead, close and open the task to get the prompt again. Some tasks need to be completed in hidden areas, away from the normal thoroughfare. Meaning if you are killed, the chances of your body being found decrease. The shield task on the scale can be done from the other side of the railing, keeping you away from the corner. The rightmost wheel task on Polus can be done from inside the corridor, keeping you in the path of discovery. The first part of the water bottle task on Polus leaves you hidden deep on the left. Instead, access the task from above the wall, giving you more vision of the main room. Finally for tasks, the secrets of the card swipe task. A look at the LED display will reveal it shakes back and forth once a second. You can use this as a guide. The time taken to complete the task does not include holding the card at the start before you begin or at the end after you finish. The travel time of the card must be longer than half a second and shorter than two seconds. And at some point in its journey, the card must include a fast swiping action. The rules above are why a steady card swipe within this time frame will not work, yet madly sliding the card back and forth produces results. My preferred method is a fast swipe to just over the halfway point, wait a second, and then finish the slide. Moving on to the detective side of things, I feel I must highlight an important point so many miss about quite a common event. When ejection confirmation is turned off, and a discussion is called with two players both telling you the other is definitely the traitor, then you must kill them both. 
Unless one of them has been proven innocent, it is nothing but a game of numbers. One of them must be the imposter. And to simply believe that you caught the correct one and leave the other alive is pure folly. For rooting out the guilty, note where tasks start and end. For example, diverting power. Someone accepting power at the start of the game before having been able to divert it is an obvious red flag. Similarly, if a crewmate fakes fueling the bottom engine of Skeld first, or the left fuel on Polus first, these are more red flags. The most common task faked out of order is pretending to upload the data in admin or comms on Polus before having been able to download it somewhere else on the map. Take note of the direction players are facing when they leave rooms. For example, in Skeld, both of the medbay tasks are on the right side of the room, meaning when the person leaves the room, their character will naturally be facing left. If they are facing right, it's not 100% a confirmation, but they probably came from the vent on the left side of the room. You can also see this in action if they are facing right for the download in electrical, as they should have been facing left for having just walked there. Or if they are facing left when faking the shield task on Mira, facing right at the wires by Mira decontamination, or facing left at assembling the artifact. Note there are many of these and they are not proofs of guilt, but they should help you maintain a healthy degree of suspicion. Imposters standing next to tasks that they can interact with, like cameras, cannot sabotage unless they open the menu before moving there. So if you noticed a crewmate at the admin vision, cameras or something similar and a sabotage is called, then they are most likely not the imposter. So visual confirmation tasks are turned off, eh? Well, isn't it good then that only one person at any one time can scan in the medbay? If you have the scan task and someone else is already scanning, you can confirm they are innocent by trying to scan and being told to wait in a queue. If you are scanning and you see a crewmate scamper up next to you, stop your scan so they can begin and you can verify them in turn. When viewing the admin map, take note that the map shows the number of bodies in that location, whether they are alive or dead, or on the map itself or in the vents. So, if you see a crewmate leave medbay and instantly appear in security or electrical, you know they've just vented. Also, if you see any crewmate character blip, then it means they were just killed in that room. Quickly, get there to report the body and maybe catch the killer in the process. Finally, for a couple of cheeky crewmate plays. Due to the way the game is designed, crewmates can block view of the cameras with their body. If someone is on cams, you can stand directly in front of the camera light, obscuring this from the killer and wait for them to strike you down only to ensure their own demise. It's a common play that if the imposter comes across two dead beats on the camera, they can kill one and make a getaway, whilst the other is oblivious in the digital world. So if you notice a fellow crewmate on cams and have nothing better to do, don't join them on the cameras, but rather pretend to be on the cameras. Hold your position further from the entrance, and if the killer decides to strike, you will have seen them in all their glory. On to the imposter tricks. Most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, if there are only six alive with two imposters after a meeting, the imposters will have the same kill cooldown. A victory is assured if you both kill the second the cooldown comes up. Do not enter any vents. Do not interact with the admin map. That halts your timer. You must kill as soon as possible. Don't let your imposter buddy down. When you are in a double kill imposter combo, bodies reported will naturally be together. In this scenario, many of the crewmates will be able to 100% vouch for each other as they would not have split up from the start and moved as a group, therefore being unable to kill. This can leave you in a sticky situation. So, two options present themselves. If it's Polus, you can simply rush to the emergency button and claim you saw a body or two on the vitals monitor and wanted to report it quickly so the killer doesn't get away. 
That's or wait a short while and then report a single body yourself. Claim there's only one body at this location and the rest of the crew will not be any the wiser. This way, they can't fully trust those closest to them. If lights are out, cameras still show full vision. Don't be tempted to kill near them when they are on, ever. If you get caught entering or leaving a vent, try and use the vents to get ahead of the person on their way to the emergency button and kill your target before they can call a meeting. This is much simpler on Mira. When your kill button blinks for a microsecond, this means your imposter friend has just killed. Useful to know. If you manage a kill alone when it's a 1v3, continue to shut doors to give your cooldown more time to recharge before they can suspect you. When in the final three, if the jig is up, don't instantly do a sabotage. If you do and the crew are smart, they can sometimes fix the issue and get back to the button before you can kill again. Instead, look at the meeting button and wait until the meeting timer is almost up before sabotaging. If you aren't sure where people are and are asked to state where you were during a round, then say you are heading to a specific place rather than being at that place. This is much harder for the crewmates to disprove. If you find in your group that this sort of alibi is not enough, look at the admin map during the round and it can reveal unused locations to lie about being in. Naturally, you all want tips for the imposter more than any other. It's the hardest part of the game and the area where the most genius IQ level plays can be made. However, unlike being a crewmate, which comes down to rigid discipline and ruthless logic, being an imposter depends on so many factors, which is why this game is so addictive. What works for one team will not work for another. You need to work out what will work for you and your group. For that, I cannot help you. You will just need to be unpredictable, silent killer, and smart above all else. And if you're playing with randoms, God help us all. Right, well, as you've proven, there's probably more tips out there. I guess we'll see in the future. For now, I'll see you in another tutorial.